Welcome to the ITU studio at WTDC 14, the World Telecommunication Development Conference. And I'm very pleased to be joined by Mr. Cosmas Zavazava, who is Chief of Project Support and Knowledge Management Department of the BDT, the Telecommunication Development Bureau of ITU. Cosmas, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Now, you're also Secretary of the Steering Committee and of the plenaries here of WTDC 14. I'd like to uh, start off by talking about uh, the uh, actual report that just, you've just brought out here, uh, which is tracking four years of achievements, uh, implementing the, the Hyderabad Action Plan. Um, and, and this is four years on from Hyderabad, which was the previous World Telecommunication Development Conference. What has uh, happened since then? Okay, that report is in a, a synopsis of what we did over the past four years since uh, the Hyderabad uh, Conference on Development that took place in 2010. Uh, you know the priority areas were quite broad. Uh, we're looking at infrastructure, uh, ICT applications and services, cyber security, human and institutional capacity building. We're looking at issues pertaining to mainstreaming ICTs uh, in terms of gender, people with disabilities, youth and so forth. And we were particularly looking at a growing trend of climate change and its impacts and uh, uh, emergency telecommunications because of the increasing number of disasters. So we tried to profile uh, on a region by region basis uh, the work that we did in assisting countries uh, to implement the Hyderabad Action Plan, which contained a declaration, an action plan with those components that I have mentioned. So uh, you, you will find some case studies in there and some real life examples of how ICTs could change people's lives. And we recently actually went out and filmed some of uh, some case studies, some success stories really from this. So there's been real action that's been happening since then. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm pleased that the video that our team uh, produced is quite informative. It uh, goes to point that what we are doing is not in vain. And we are not just technology people, but we are there to impact people's lives. For example, the clip that we have on Japan tells the story of the disaster that happened in Japan, which cost a lot of human lives, and uh, it displaced many people, and some people remained missing. Uh, so it really disrupted everything, and billions of dollars were lost as a result of the earthquake and also the tsunami. When we looked at uh, Africa, we took an example of Tanzania, where we were looking at how we could change people's lives by connecting young people at school and making sure that communities are also connected. And we have many examples, Costa Rica, how you could be leading a better life, uh, how you could use ICTs to campaign against the smoking. So we tried to make sure that um, we dealt with the ecosystem of ICTs and try to change people's lives because technology without uh, impacting people or without contributing to sustainable development or saving lives is uh, really a useless tool. I was going to say, this conference here, is it very much a springboard for sustainable development? We believe in uh, value addition. When we came from Hyderabad, our aim was to make sure that we implemented the actions, projects and activities uh, that we agreed on, or the member states agreed on in Hyderabad. And now we learned a lot during that process and the environment has been changing. So this conference is a springboard to embrace new technologies, to embrace new strategies, particularly uh, now that we are coming to the end of the MDGs in 2015, the World Summit on the Information Society goals and the targets. And uh, we are embracing a new era, the post-2015 development agenda. We've heard some very interesting policy statements here from ministers from all the different countries represented here. Uh, one of them was uh, from Malaysia, in fact, uh, talking about uh, the, the black box and talking about how technology could assist further in uh, tracking planes in real time and that kind of thing. So there's some very interesting issues that are being raised here. There are great issues. I think uh, this conference is not more of the same. It is different and unique because in terms of technologies, we are seeing the emergency of uh, better technologies uh, that are emerging, uh, nanotechnologies that are emerging, but 
the applications have changed also. If you look region by region, the penetration level of mobile telephony has increased. We have over now 7 billion people connected and uh, each person has got more than one device. So it's a network society. Machine to machine communication has become a reality. And uh, if you look at internet penetration, broadband is the in thing. Because by the way, I remind you that the theme of this conference is actually broadband for sustainable development. And I'm pleased to say that although fixed broadband is not growing at a rapid road, uh, rate, uh, mobile broadband is growing very fast, particularly in the developing world. So I think um, there is a realization that technology, particularly information and communication technology, is a game changer. And the MH370 tragedy should never happen. And this was a quote from our Secretary General. I think the membership agrees. The technology is there, the potential is there. We develop standards, we uh, manage spectrum, uh, we allocate spectrum to countries and regions. There is no reason why a solution could not be found. And I know that our colleagues who are in the standardization area are certainly keen to work with the membership and with our sector members to make sure that things like that don't happen in the future. And most importantly also, I should say, natural disasters are happening all the time. Uh, yesterday alone we had an 8.2 earthquake in Chile, which uh, caused a little bit of uh, tsunamis. And we now learned with the sadness that a number of people have perished. And we should not uh, be complacent at all. And climate change is a reality. And we know that most of the regions are grappling with the food security issues, uh, new epidemics are emerging, and so forth. So the challenge is still there. We've got a very full dance card here for the, the conference. Uh, what are some of the hopes and expectations for this? I think uh, we celebrate the fact that we had a record number of ministers for the first time at a conference of this magnitude, uh, a record number of vice ministers, a record number of regulators, a record number of the private sector. So the enthusiasm is there. We have over 1,600 participants, and it's uh, unprecedented. It's a record. Now, having said that, it shows that there is a common vision. And I think we believe in one thing, that we have to change our lives and those of anybody, irrespective of where they live, where they come from, who they are, and what sex they belong to. We just have to make sure that everybody has the right to the latest communication services and technologies and they should use it to change their lives and make sure that they contribute to the development of society as a whole. Out of this conference, uh, looking at the contributions and proposals that have been submitted, it is clear that broadband is at the center of things and it will unlock a lot of opportunities and a world of choice in terms of industry, in terms of communication tools, in terms of uh, health delivery, education, and you can look at another area of human uh, life. Secondly, uh, I think our strength lies in making sure that we provide services and applications to communities and to the people. For example, you know the case of M-Pesa that uh, was born and bred in Africa. Uh, mobile banking is an in thing. And many countries, by the way, small countries are depending, particularly in the Pacific, and small island developing states and LDCs, they are depending on the diaspora who remit funds. And mobile services such as that do help. Delivery of mobile health services is critical. There are many people who suffer from diabetes, many people who have got weak hearts, blood pressure, and the medical fraternity is a great opportunity to make sure that each individual's mobile phone gives a warning to a patient to take it easy or to take their medication. So that will unlock a whole new way of doing things and de delivering services to communities and to individuals. Third, I think we have always said it is important to police the cyber highway. So cyber security remains on the agenda and the member states are keen to discuss and ITU he has worked on a cybersecurity index, and I think that is going to be quite interesting. This afternoon alone, we have got an information session which is going to deal with that. And we would like to make sure that people are free to use the information highway, but it has to be secured. 
money laundering, pornography, and other ills you have got to stop. Uh, the other thing is, it is useless to have the best technology you may have without building capacity. So institutional capacity building and also human capacity building are critical elements and we are going to be focusing on that. Emergence telecommunications, climate change mitigation and adaptation, uh, e-waste management, those are some of the topics that are repeatedly coming up and in the future we'll be looking at those. Cosmos ever, ever, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. That was very comprehensive and very useful indeed. It has been a pleasure for me too. Thank you. And thank you for watching.